Hey y'all, okay, so we're gonna work on number three from the arithmetic pretest. Um, it said simplify the square root, that's how you read that little check mark house, square root of 100 over 400. Uh, so first thing we need to talk about is the word simplify, what it means. Uh, a lot of times when I say simplify, my students think that I'm talking about reducing fractions. Um, so interestingly, this problem does involve reducing fractions. It wouldn't have to, but that's not all simplify means, okay? Simplifying is much larger than just reducing fractions. So let's give ourselves a little definition here of simplifying. Um, to simplify. Okay, what simplify literally means is perform the indicated operation. What do I mean the indicated operation? Well, we have different symbols in math that tell us things to do, operations. We have a little plus sign you guys are familiar with that tells us to add. And we have a couple of operations that are indicated by this particular problem here. Um, let's take a look at them. Uh, one, I see the, let me get my pencil out here. I see this symbol. This is known as the radical. Okay, um, uh, a radical, radicals are the opposites of powers, so the inverse operation of a power, we're undoing, or raising something to a power when we use a radical. This particular radical with no number here, it has no index here, is a square root, so we're taking a square root. Okay, and um, that is one of our operations. The other operation I see is a fraction bar. And fraction bars are one of those interesting operations because there's two ways to interpret a fraction bar, and we can use either one, whichever one's easier for us. A fraction bar can literally mean divide. If the top number divides perfectly by the bottom number, you can feel free to do that. But let's think about it. 100 is not going to divide nicely by 400. At least we won't have a whole number answer. We're going to end up with pieces and parts if we take 100 things and divide it in 400 pieces. So we have two choices of how to express pieces and parts. I could do it as a decimal. I could do it as a fraction. In this case, when I start out with a fraction, let's leave our answer as a fraction. And so rather than dividing it all the way through, all I'm going to do with this sucker is reduce. Okay, so let's take note of the two things we have to do. We have to take a square root. And we need to reduce our fraction. Uh, so that being said, does order matter? Good question. Order matters a lot in mathematics. As it turns out in this particular problem, order does not matter. It won't matter if you do the reducing first and the square rooting afterwards, or the square rooting afterwards and the reducing first. In some of these problems, it's wiser to do one or the other. Um, and so let's just look at it. Let's look at it both ways. Uh, let's try it in the usual order first. Most of the time in mathematics, we go from the inside to the outside. So we could give it a try. Let's go ahead and start inside this radical uh, with the reduction here. So one thing you may remember when we reduced fractions is that anything that ends in 0 is divisible by 10. And so here we have two numbers, 100 and 400, that are divisible by 10. And the quick way to do that is just cancel 0 for 0. So I cancel a 0 off the back of each one of those numbers, and I still have another 0 for 0 to cancel. And I can see that 100 divided by 400 reduces to 1 fourth. So new expression, uh, the square root of 100 over 400 is now this reduced to 1 fourth. Now, a lot of students make a very common mistake of stopping right here. They go, I'm done, <laughs> but be very careful. You only dealt with one of the operations. You dealt with the fraction bar. You have not yet, dealt, not yet dealt with the square root symbol. So I need to see a square root symbol still in your problem. If you haven't done it, it drops. Always in math, if you haven't done it, it drops. So next thing to do is the square root of 1 over 4. Now, a lot of teachers won't show you this next step. It's not necessary for you to show it on your paper, but I just want to show it to you to remind you why it works. It is when you take the square root of a, any fraction, the really nice thing is that that is equivalent to just taking the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. I kind of just pass that square root symbol out, and it'll be a lot easier to deal with than to deal with my fraction. And so most of us know the square root of 1. Remember what square root means? Let's write that down. When you see a square root, you're asking yourself, what number 
times itself equals equals whatever's on the inside of this square root. So in this case, what number times itself is equal to 1? Well, of course, we know that 1 times 1 is equal to 1. And so the top of this fraction simplifies to 1. And we still have a fraction bar. Is that ugly or what? <laughs> okay, so we still have our fraction bar. Now let's go on the bottom here and ask ourselves what number times itself equals 4? And of course, um, if you take 2 and multiply it by itself, 2, you are going to get 4. So the bottom of my fraction is 2. And there we go. That is the answer. This whole thing simplifies to just 1 half. Okay, so I said I would probably try this problem both ways. So um, since order doesn't matter here, what if we tried it the other way? What if we did the radical first, um, dealt with that square root, and then once we were done with that, we tried reducing the fraction. I mean, I said it wouldn't matter. Uh, so let's see if I'm a liar. Let's see if we can get the same answer going that way. Okay, so again, remember, if I say the square root of 100 over 400, I am allowed to deal with these two separately. I can take first the square root of the top number, 100. And then when I'm done with that, let's see if making this thicker makes it more legible, um, I could take the square root of the denominator, 400. Again, you don't really have to write out this step. I'm just doing it so you can see where my mind's going. I'm do dealing with the square root one number at a time. This one's easy. Uh, we know how to get 100. Um, we know what number times itself equals 100. Most of us do anyway. Um, so the number uh, th that when multiplied by itself equals 100 is 10, right? 10 times 10 is 100. So we get a 10 on the top of our fraction here. But now let's deal with the bottom. Yeah, a lot of you guys go, how in the world am I supposed to know what the square root of 400 is? Great question. And the really nice thing is what this is what we call one of those round numbers. Okay, see how it ends in zeros? When that happens with the square root, you can kind of ignore the zeros and think about this. Can you just think about this uh, non-zero portion? What number times itself equals 4? Yeah, well, 2, right? Oh, that's not what I need. Let's try that again. So 2. 2 times 2 equals 4. Now, notice, I needed something that when multiplied by itself ended up with two zeros. So we know that zeros accumulate when we multiply. So 20 times 20 would have given me, well, 2 times 2 is 4, with a couple of zeros, 400. Since 20 times 20 would give me 400, that means the square root of 400 is 20. Okay, so now I've done the first step here. I found my square root. Yeah, so now let's try reducing our fraction. We have the fraction 10 over 20. Once again, I see this little phenomenon here. They both end with zeros, which means both these numbers are divisible by 10. The fast and easy way to divide by 10, boom, cancel out zero for zero. And so did I get what I expected to get? Indeed. Oh, let's make that black. Let's try it again. Indeed, <laughs> we get 10 divided by 1, or yeah, 10 divided by 10 is 1, and fraction bar, 20 divided by 10 is 2. We get 1 half. If you need help doing any of these skills, I have sets you can practice that I'll put on the page here on how to take square roots of numbers if you need practice memorizing them. And I have the big round ones like this too. Um, reducing fractions, I'll put practice of that on the um, page. And I think that's about all the skills you need for this particular problem. So check that out if you need that. If this is all you need, then great, move on.